As a journalist for Telemundo, you report for a Hispanic and Latino audience. Yes. How is reporting for that audience similar or different from another audience? It's a great question, Fred. It's very similar in the sense that everybody in the United States has the same problems, has the same dreams, has the same aspirations, and wants their children to have a better life than they did. Uh, everybody here has a version of the American dream. The difference, Fred, is that when you have uh, so many millions of people that just until recently came from another country in Latin America, uh, they still have a lot of interest in what's going on in, let's say, Latin America. More than 60% of our audience is Mexican-American, so they care very much what's going on in Mexico. And as you know, it has a 2,500 mile border with the United States, so what happens in Mexico is very relevant to the border states and to the rest of the country. So it's similar in the sense that we cover the same stories that everybody else does in English, but we have a focus on uh, the Hispanic uh, community's uh, interest vis-a-vis -vis Latin America. I read that you were the first Cuban American to host a network news program. How does your heritage impact your work as a journalist? Yes, I was the, the first Cuban American to host uh, a network news program in English because uh, luckily, uh, even though I'm very old, uh, there were some before me that opened some doors. I think that it's really uh, a, when you're the first at something, uh, you have a responsibility to, first of all, work hard, study hard, and make sure that you do as good of a job as you can so that in the future, others that are 11 years old uh, see you and say, you know what, maybe I could do it. If he can do it, I can do it. And so I think that's how it helped me to recognize that it's not just about one's personal triumphs or even one's career. It's about making sure that you do everything you can to make a difference and that uh, kids like Fred or Ricardo that are 11 years old and they're seeing someone like themselves on English language television can say, you know what, if he can do that, I can do that. So that's, that's what I take uh, from that uh, specific thing. Did you face any obstacles in becoming a journalist because of your heritage, and how did yes. you overcome them? That's a great question, Fred. It's difficult, even in 2011, for some uh, to say Jose Diaz Balart. It's not a very easy name to say for many people. Uh, it's three names, and you know, it's kind of confusing to some people. So I've always faced the issue of, uh, gosh, that's a name that we're not really used to. Some people don't tell you that, but they can't say your name. Uh, and then there's, you know, look, the fact is that you'll always find someone who thinks that in order to keep you back, they can use whatever excuse. Uh, they may think that, oh, you know, he's, he doesn't represent the people I want to be speaking to. Uh, but they could say that about blonde kids with blue eyes. So the fact is that <clears throat> whatever other people uh, think is an impediment for you to continue and succeed is just a door that you have to go around. Uh, I never harp on that because I think that whether it happens or doesn't as we go along, I think that we all have to just never take no for an answer. If you have dreams and aspirations and if you've studied hard and you've done everything you can in school to listen to the teachers and to listen to your parents and to make sure that even though you are young, it may be that you have a, an accent or your skin color is different or, than others, uh, or a number of things that other people could think, or, think are different about you, it's important to never take no if you prepare. That's why you gotta prepare from your age and even younger, man, because, because you'll always find people that will talk to the hand. And you just gotta go around that hand. And the way to go around that hand is by being prepared and studying and know how to read and know how to write and caring about your, uh, your education. Um, when did you first want to be a journalist and what about that profession appealed to you? I think of journalism as public service, Fred. I think that um, we can all make a better world by simply doing what you feel your heart tells you you are here on this earth to do. I didn't know I was going to be a journalist until after college. Uh, I thought I was going to do something that was going to help in some way, but I didn't know how. And, and life has a, has a way of, in my specific case, of kind of letting the chips fall in a certain way to show me that this is the way that I could probably help 
uh, our community. Uh, but it wasn't until uh, I was already working in journalism, I thought I was going to do this temporarily, that things happened and I went, you know what, this is, this is something we could do to help bridge different people with different thoughts and people who don't understand different things. Imagine, if you can go somewhere, Fred, and by your reporting, let someone, someone else, somewhere else understand something that they're not dealing with, you're doing a good job. But it's all about being prepared in life and studying hard and, 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 and respecting your education. What are the most important education issues and stories for Telemundo's audience? And are they different from the concerns of other audiences? Highest dropout rate in the country. Lowest high school graduation numbers. The digital divide. You know, there are a lot of people in our community that don't have access to a computer or the internet at home. Imagine how different your life would be if at home you didn't have access to a computer and to the internet. It'd be like tough, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, imagine never having that. And then imagine going for the first date at school when they're going to be in a school where Fred has had internet since he was born and access to the information and then another kid who's never even had that. That's, a, that's not the same playing field. So those are the issues that we're dealing with. Um, why is education reporting so important? For what I've just told you. Because we are a community, as the Hispanic community, that has a serious, serious dropout rate. And at the same time, we're the largest minority in the country. It's the fastest growing population in the country. And that's not good math. When you have the lowest graduation in high school, you have the highest dropout rate, and you're the largest minority, something needs to be done to help kind of level out that, that, that field so that we as a community can help contribute more to this economy and to the society, but at the same time become more responsible American citizens. What advice do you have for kids who want to be journalists? Work hard, study, study, study. Listen to your parents. Listen to your teachers. And if something is wrong in the classroom and you're not getting the education that you feel you deserve, you talk to your parents about it. And if your parents don't do anything about it, you talk to your school principal about it. But don't take mediocrity as the status quo. Study hard because your education is the only true inheritance that we receive as human beings.